Eric. <laughs> uh, well, Kyle? Yes, Garrett. You saw nothing. What? Exactly. You are... Greetings and salutations. Can you hear me? So, it's finally happened then. Yeah, we're back. Playing the MSQ again. I was enjoying Endwalker. I... I was liking it. I wasn't loving it. There it is. Now there I get it. it. There it is. Now I get yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is this is this is this is why everyone loses their shit. I mean, there's a lot of hinting. You know. Yeah. There's a lot of foreshadowing. Vanal on the boat. A conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable. Then shall I honor the promise made in another time, another age. All of Elizabeth's stuff, everything he had to say. I'm having I'm having one of those moments, everybody. I'm having one of those moments where I'm really trying not to be a cringy fanboy. But this was cringy fanboy worthy. This was really good. If it's good, it's good. If it's good, it's good. It's good. It's, and if it's good, good, it's good. It's good. And there are more than enough structures to hold up the goodness. The difficulty with what we're here to do today is how do you describe it all? How do you capture every single moment that you, the audience, found important? Because what we found important may not be what you found important. And since there is the viewership of Final Fantasy as a popular pastime hobby, which makes sense given all the, uh, well, past times that happen inside of it. What? Yeah. The realizations on multiple viewings that can happen. There's that, no way we're going to capture it all in this episode. Oh, no. One, absolutely 100% not. No, this is this is like you and me having a, a two-person book club as, as, as we play through this game together. And I'm surprised. I didn't really feel it in Shadowbringers. I would enjoy watching other people's reactions to Shadowbringers. But not as much as I think as I was enjoy watching anyone's reaction to any part of Final Fantasy XIV after this point. The, the, the grand realization that all of our adventure up until the end of Elpis is a closed time loop. It really does boggle my mind. I do not want to say blow, blow, blew my mind. It is, that is such an overused phrase. It's lost all meaning. I think you can say blow but your it mind. did. It, it, it's a mind blow type yeah. situation. I don't work. Two things I'm trying to. Here's my goal. Here's my goal, everybody, for today. There's two things I'm trying not to do. I'm trying not to say blew my mind and I'm trying not to say epic. Good luck. You, right? Because that's exactly <laughs> what this section is. And because you now agree with the bulk of fans doesn't mean that our personal adventure has really changed. No. For instance, I don't feel a need to apologize today about my opinions on Hylian Vana. They're still my opinions. And I'm got, sure there will be people in the comments that are demanding an, uh, an apology. Sure, but you, these are... But you're not going to get one. But, but it's my personal <laughs> journey, right, with this It is. Content. It is your personal journey. Now, however, I will now turn to the camera yet again and say, I'm intensely pleased with what they did. And for me, there are certain caveats, certain things that have to happen to make this work, and they did it particularly involving Vana. It had to be the way they did it, and they did it very well. But that doesn't mean I forgive her. <laughs> but I also understand why she didn't do more than she could because she would mess with the time. So let's, like, let's just dive in. Let's just dive into time travel. It's a time loop. It's a time loop. 
First process complete. <laughs> like it, you can't, you can't not talk about this out of order because it is out of order. Or is it intensely in order? Well, that's the weird thing. It just right? breaks with your concept of time, which is linear. So, for instance, let's go ahead and talk about the spaceship. Yeah, what spaceship? We what, haven't seen a spaceship. Today yet. is going to make no sense to anybody tuning in that who's never played. Like that was always the case, but this is perhaps the most asinine insane things you're going to hear in one of these episodes if you haven't played and walker so the spaceship full of bunnies <laughs> the spaceship it's a moon full of bunnies yes well it's a vessel i think we're assuming it's a it's a spaceship and it might look like a piece of pizza it might and it might teleport people up to it or it might have landing crafts we're not really sure how exactly it works but imagine heidelin makes a spaceship to take us to a nest of harpies who have gone insane and when you arrive on said moon, all the bunnies are like, Welcome, warrior, we're here to ferry you away. Because you're supposed to save the world. Would you be on board for that? She gives you a flower called Elpis, the Elpis flower. You've heard the name well before you go to the place. Take the flower. Walk free. For you are free. To go where you wish. To believe what you will. She's seeding in your mind because if she told you about the place first and didn't give you the flower, then there's a chance, because people like me would disagree with her, that we wouldn't want to go on that adventure anyways. Instead, it's an adventure of self-discovery. So Vina is just Ishikawa. Because you could also say it's just a cute way to seed a mystery before you're revealed what the answer to the mystery is. For us, the actual players of the game outside of the reality of the game world. Heidelin was being coy because she was seeding an adventure for you. And if she told you, hey, go into space and fight despair, the essence of despair is absorbed by a bunch of harpy girls. Mm. You might not want to do it. Oh, that's what you meant by harpies. You're calling Twitter girl harpy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, lo I love it. My, my reaction on stream remains unchanged that I, I love it when time travel doesn't suck. Yes. Like, uh, so much of what we have put out there, be it through the streams or through these videos, has been about our personal journey. My personal journey. Kyle's personal journey through Final Fantasy XIV. And through that, we've talked at nauseum about tropes and story beats and character archetypes and everything that you use to make a cohesive story that we like and we dislike. If you've been watching us for a while, you're probably very aware of our likes and our dislikes. And uh, one that doesn't fall cleanly into either category for me is time travel. I like it when I like it, and I don't like it when I think it's dumb. It's one of those like pointless takes. It's like, yeah, I like it when it's well done. Like, yeah, everyone likes everything when it's well done. Sure. But that's 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 my cop out on time travel. Like, that's the power of love. This was like such a beautifully cut and dry time loop. Then. And, and I, I really appreciate the game not being so freaking nebulous about it. Because if you go back and you watch our stream, we're both just a, just a mess, just a garbage pile of questions. Before you leave, before you walk through, before you step foot into DeLorean, Elidibus is like, now don't change anything. We, we weren't supposed to change anything. How could telling the like, three major players, no, four, because we had Vina, Heidelin, Hermes, and Emma. Because is Hermes? No, Hermes isn't in the room for that. Not that particular part of the conversation, but we do tell him later that he effed up and destroyed the universe. Do we tell him that? Yeah, we tell him that to his face when we're standing there right before Medion gives us the big rundown. <gasps> oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about how why that was important to Hermes because uh, uh, Bl uh, Bluebird becoming Blackbird is going to be seared in my memory for a while. Well, and that's why he had to delete his own memories to kind of redeem himself in a time loopy kind of way, right? Well, you know, I, I was also smart because he already set his plan in motion. Medion was already gone away scot-free and to, I think, protect his own plans, which are already in motion that can't be altered now. It, it just doesn't matter to him. He's like, so I'm just going to wipe my own memory so that I don't slip up. But also gave him a redeeming quality because he's one of the key members with his knowledge of the cosmos who leads to the creation of Zodiac. So he actually kind of saved the world by not knowing he had destroyed it. It's a weird sympathetic villain loop where he is 
alone in the universe, experiencing essentially depression in a perfect society, which was, is mind boggling. It's not a perfect society though. No, it's not. Our entire time on Elpis is like getting the point across that it's not a perfect society. Well, that's the gaslighting of it, right? That everyone's <laughs> telling you constantly you live in this perfect well, it's, society. It's Emmett's telling us that. True. It was also one of the youngest members to ever make it on the 14, which is an interesting note. It is. He's full of piss and vinegar. Yeah. You know, so he's he's idealistic. He hasn't had the, the, the wisdom or the calming nature of age. Uh, <laughs> I mean that as in the one line he said, there might be younger ones. Hey, it's my first playthrough. There's a line where Vinaz like a shame for one so young. You must make an effort to frown less often. Well, and from Venata Emma too, that would make sense that she would feel that way because they confirm that she was previously Asim and has since retired, which would just infer right. that she's older. It, not guaranteed. I'm assuming there could be younger members that left pretty early. Yeah, you know, like a uh, Christopher Eccleston Ninth Doctor situation, or just like do Russell T Davis, I'm out. Uh, yeah, return to the star. Yeah, it's what I. It's another thing that I think is really well done. I want to say it's a very realistic thing, as if fathoming eternal life is realistic, which it. It's clearly not. I'm not outing myself as a vampire, anybody. Not a vampire. Not a vampire. That's something I love being explored in, in any medium is the weight of eternal life. I absolutely love it. And that's something that I enjoy. But you are relating to more. Whereas for me, you know what I love? Dark forest theory. Fermi's paradox. The idea that every alien civilization is dead. That's freaky. It I like, keeps I like me up at night. All of it, by yeah. the way. I like all of it. Like it's horrifying. Everything here, other than like maybe Akasha, because I'm just like it's one too many pieces of magic lore. Well, like I just don't that's need the it. Dead ghosts. It's literally the dead despair of aliens floating in space. What's not to love? Is that confirmed? I, well, because all the aliens are dead, so it's not really aliens that she's communing with. She's Connected to the collective, the echoes of their death, dark energy, despair of dead. But, but Akasha isn't inherently dark and despair. It it flows and and mirrors the emotions around it. Well, that's that's a, it's in that's it in its natural form. We're probably going to explore this. I assume this is the whole. I would imagine. Ending. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. I'm, I'm not saying I even care that much about it. I'm just saying that it's it's probably like the one wrinkle that I'm just like that's the one thing where I'm like. I could take or leave it. Everything else. Oh boy, I'm so on board for it. I, I, I love the cosmic horror element that's coming in yeah. here of just like, you have a character that's on the brink that's just like reaching like he's, Hermes is emo incarnate. Like, stop me from losing hope. And I'm going to fire satellites off into every corner of, the, of space for essentially unlimited chances to pull me out of this. And w just what, what if, what if that went so much worse than you could ever imagine? And through this person, even darker, deeper, further down that endless pit of despair than you could ever be afraid of. Because you asked too simple of a question because you didn't send them with a good mission. I you love send out these probes. <laughs> it's such a good eminent moment, right? right? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> because, exactly. Because it'd be so easy to take him to task. And and just be like, wh why are you why are you hinging your happiness on the reality? Like you could, there's so many different ways you could you could go after Hermes. There's so there's a lot of fallacies going on here, but Emmett, because he's a perfectly written character that knows like like if, if if someone was role playing this character, you would constantly be giving them points for never breaking the role that they're that they fit within. He just immediately goes. There is a very specific reason why this is wrong, and this is it. Right. Well, and he was also avoiding peer review by using a familiar to do this. And that's another justification for why this works. It was a building block along the way to warn us that while we might sympathize with Hermes, we should also realize that he cuts a lot of corners and is kind of sneaky. Tell me, do you think it right? that we sacrifice all these lives for the sake of the star. And when the star has reached perfection, what then? If all who are satisfied choose to die, shall we all die in satisfaction? He needed fallacies, pitfalls, that weren't depression. Don't you mean that, footfalls? That would just be bad. That would just be 
tone deaf to for the storyline to be like, Hermes had depression in perfect society, therefore he destroyed the world. I was slightly fearful that's what they were going for. Now, I just watched the elephant run with a child, and I wasn't too worried about it, because they've been very caring, very human about their execution all this so far. And in the end, it wasn't his sadness that caused the final days. It was his curiosity, even his innocence, in sending out these bird daughters. Bird, bird, do- bird daughter, sure, yes, yes. He needs peer review. He desperately needs peer review. (sighs) You. Why have you awakened me? I want to rewind all the way back. Okay. Not all the way back, mind you. Just enough. To Elidibus. Because Elidibus made me think, made me feel we were going into a dream. A simulation, perhaps, of the past. He was very much, you're going to witness it. You can't do anything about it. That immediately gets dissolved the second we meet Emmett, who infuses us with enough ether to walk around and talk. I was really never on board. I've I've learned the hard way multiple times not to discount any of your theories completely, unless they're about Nutkins. What if... The Nutkin is actually a reference being on Thancred to the live stream, which a lot of people are saying, wouldn't it be funny if Kyle was right about the Nutkin, which yes, you're right. It would actually be the funniest possible outcome. I was never really on board with it being a simulation because why would Elidibus warn us in the first place about not changing things if it's a simulation and it doesn't matter? If it doesn't matter, why warn us? Well, he would. Yeah, this, this game is very sneaky a lot of times, but it's usually when it tells you something, it's it's being straightforward. For the sake of dealing with Elidibus, let's go in order. So first thing he says is, Your unsolicited act, murdering me, has restored to me some few memories of the convocation. We get into that. Your memories will be restored yep. when you die. Yep. So that would have made sense the same night if we had just, you know, no life all the way through. Exactly. This. And so when Hitlerdeus there in the big room is talking about when we die, I'll remember this. That'll be cool yep. when that happens. Yep. He also says, Were it not for his knowledge of the Celestial, we would never have made the connection and thence forestalled the final days. So this is what I'm talking about when I say Fan Daniel did contribute. Fan Daniel was the driving force and the expert when it came to building Zodiac. So a redeeming quality there. Even though he was combating himself. Yes, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it just goes to show how effective the mind manipulation is. Here's where it gets weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> here's where it gets weird. Just 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 here. Just only now. here. Oh, just now. Nowhere else. Just now it got weird. Elidibus goes, "Wait." Wait. I saw you there. In Elpis. No, I did not, but I did, I did. And granted, you know, he's a faceless figure with a mask, there's not a lot of emotion to read, but he does seem to be reeling from a sudden realization. It's a surprise to him. So, and it never came up, which is kind of interesting. Was he standing up on a floating island? Was he, actually, we don't know what he looks like. Was he unmasked and standing around? Maybe. Wouldn't Elidibus have been on the convocation already, though? Yes, because they talk about him there. We don't know what it looks like. He didn't get naked and scandalous because he got into his Warrior of Light outfit. And only every time oh, we've I seen him. I hadn't thought about that. Is that, yeah. is that his transformed form? Likely, right? Really, but, but Hermes looks so much like Hades when he transforms. Well, it's so similar. It was still kind of loopy, you know? It, it was Warrior of Light wasn't. The Warrior of Light was a giant Final Fantasy one reference? No, but it was still um the the... The silhouette is still of that, I've got feathers on my face, sort of swirliness. You're saying Warrior of Light Elidibus. Yes. I, I disagree. Know I know it's a little I fully music. disagree. I think, yeah, I think when you, you line up Hades, Hermes, and Warrior of Light, I'd say those are all a mono. I mean, they're, they're a mono, but they're, no, no, because the, they're like the Hermes, uh, no, Her, yeah, Hermes and Emmet are kind of lich-like. They're very... Wide at the bottom, kind of fluted up almost in a candelabra fashion up towards the top. Whereas Warrior of Light is just armor clad dude with horn helmet. And we don't know because he was a kid, so maybe it was like half formed, maybe over the years. That's the fan theory. Yeah. From the way everyone talks about it as being a theory, 
Um, which thank you, by the way, there's a few people that, uh, cause me wrinkles because they talk about theories as if they were not theories and were in fact confirmed. There are many of those, but I've heard enough people talk about reading a little bit as being small as being a child as being a popularly, a popular fan theory, one which I subscribe to because why else would he be small? And it'd be nice in your immortal existence to have the views of someone who is not as long lived. Yeah. Be a useful tool. Yeah, wouldn't, yeah we, we would assume Elidibus would be younger than Emmett. This is what when I mean when in. I say it's up to like in personal interpretation. It's about or, what you grab there's onto. Also, there's also a chance Elidibus could just be a short little dude. It could be. Short yeah. little dude. Short people exist. Short people are short people exist, Kyle. So that's an interesting moment because did he suddenly birth those memories? No, because Heidelin exists doing all she's done so far. But for some reason, he suddenly remembered us there. And maybe it was that he was just never prompted to. Maybe he was standing outside that main tower it, as we exited. I don't think that one's that weird, by the way. No? Bef- beforehand, I was like, yeah, of course, because we already even established that we are a shard of Asm. So maybe in that moment, he's like, oh, man, you're you're freaking. And I thought this was a thing like all all Asians could do, which was like recognize your ether color. But we, we now that we've been on Elpis, we kind of realize it's it, the the. Specialization. The ancients have a lot of specialized abilities. Yeah. And that they try that's that kind of helps them fill out the convocation members as well. Okay. But here's another one. A little bit says, Yet even should you manage to interact with others, you will be unable to affect meaningful change. For the reality you wish to save, the reality to which you must return, exists as a result of the final days. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. Cannot unmake the sorrow and suffering fated to come. Which, now we understand that we did do all that in the past, so it wasn't a simulation or a dream or a recording. We actually went there, had those conversations, and memories got deleted to make that okay. Yes. Cool. I think that... Just means Elidibus understands that it's a time loop. And that it's essentially fate. He wanted to confuse you a little on the way for some uh, artistic license. <sighs> he made it more enjoyable with those questions in tow as you entered Elpis. Rather than for, thinking- for you, the player, for the, like if you're thinking about it from the perspective of the, the in-game character of the Warrior of Light, I think it's more trying to put that character at ease. Like... Don't overthink this too much because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do. You can't change you can't change anything. Don't think about it too much. Was he being a bit coy about it? Yep. As coy as Heidelin has been this entire time? Nope. Interesting you bring up Heidelin, because as you walk through the portal, he has one more thing to say that's very interesting given our final little cutscene we Oh, well, it's his dying words. Yeah. Well, Heidelin, I take my leave of you. Yours is the mantle of the last of us. May you have the joy of it, the burden and the solitude. It falls to you now. You and your champion to save our star. That's badass. It is badass. And the because I would say I experienced predominantly joy going through this entire section, even though it is about a momentously tragic event. But the joy of putting all those pieces together and realizing what type of story Final Fantasy XIV was here to tell. Oh, I experienced the joy of it a little, oh, little yeah. bit. Yeah, and connecting the pieces. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was delightful. Um, well, Kyle, congratulations. I like a little bit now. Thank you. So we arrive at Hermes Labs. Hermes Labs. We meet Medion. We meet his goldfish. And that's where we learn about Dynamis equals Akasha, which begins this whole theme of Things aren't named what they're named because, you know, it's a fancy place. Except for sharks. 
Sharks have been around since before trees, and sharks are sharks. Sharks are just called sharks. It's just a shark, you know? Just called sh- they're ancient just, beings. They're just called sharks. They're beautiful things. Just sharks. And everybody's making them. They love it. Vina loves punching them. Punching those sharks. Slam Which apparently sharks. is a good way to not get attacked by a shark. It's a good way to make an entrance, too. Pop them right in the nose. Yeah. I love the whole Vina entrance. I thought it was awesome, adventurous. When she's like, I'm as them. Yeah. Bring it. Absolutely. Yeah. You're an adventurer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And yeah. She's, she's like, behold my white robe, which says I'm down for anything. And I mean anything. You want to talk about anything? You want to go somewhere? I'm into it. Huh. You know I am. So this is an interesting wrinkle. Hmm. It's an inter- confirming that Vana used to be the se- used to hold the seat of Asm and no longer. Which also, I had, I had never thought of that, like, before we got to Elpis, that I thought the whole calling people up to the station of a, a member of the Convocation of 14 was like a po- strictly a post-sundering thing. So I think it's really cool that they talk about it like, oh yeah, no, people came and went and returned to the store and whatever, and we had to find new people and we gave them the name of the mantle of that of the vacancy they were filling. I never thought of it as something that was happening pre-sundering. Yeah, they're both different, yes. but they're both seats that are being occupied. And now that now in Lay's the wrinkle, but it's a, it's a minor wrinkle because, uh, oh, Vana used to hold the seat of Asm, but we're not a shard of Vana. We're a shard of the Asm that was holding that station at the time of the Sunder. Who apparently just punched a volcano. So that's great. Wait, I'm what? into that. They talked about punching a volcano? Yeah, the Hitlerdeus was like, he's off punching volcanoes. It's great. Uh, so, so we get to the meeting. Yeah, Vana immediately is like, are you from the future? Which we all love hearing. And I'm sitting there in my future goggles like, well, yes, yes, I am. And that's where it plays the Elidibus line, which is actually a remix of previous lines that they edited together. So it's a slightly different line than what he says back in the ocular. But essentially, it's reminding us, hey, whatever you do here, it doesn't really matter because maybe it already happened or maybe it didn't, but you can't change it. So you know what? You just rip it and start telling the story Vanas says, let's head inside and have this conversation over some tea. So you spill that tea. Have you been waiting the entire recording to make that joke? I thought of it at home. (laughs) I love this scene. I love when characters are true to themselves. I love when characters are consistently written. And Emmett, Hithlodeus, and Vanas are all consistently written. In this, they are like true to their characters. We're still kind of learning who Vana is as a character in this moment because it's the most, I guess, human she's appeared the entire time. Because like when she appears to us on the boat, we think of her as Heidelin, and there's a, like a whole god weight that comes with well, that. Well, she also have the weight of twelve thousand years. This is what I like about her. She's an adventurer. She knows how to seed an adventure. And the second you give her the lowdown, what she want to do? Gather some information. Go talk to people. Let's go. Investigate. Maybe find a stumble over a fetch quest or two. Exactly. Yeah. Doing quest stuff. But we also get a sped up version and breakdown of the overall story to this point. Yeah, yeah. Like if you needed a reminder, which would be, I imagine, very helpful if you were playing this as a current player all the way back since 2010. I mean, if you're just ripping this on release and you come and go as patches go, then flash an image of La Habre on screen. Might be a good idea. A little helpful. Yeah, it yeah. was part of the journey. I just loved how how well adjusted Hithlodeus and Vana were in this scene. Because th- for the first half of this, when they're discussing what the Warrior of Light tells them, it's a real active conversation between those three Warrior of Light, Vana, and Hithlodeus. They're trying to piece it together. They're almost playfully reeling from the realizations. They're, they're, they're concerned, but they're also, they seem legitimately interested. I disagree in one camp i do suspect and granted the faces can only do so much in this game at the moment but i do suspect that vana was a little weirded out that we just said she was a big ass crystal and there's a sort of moment of dread where her chin falls and she looks crestfallen by the idea that that is what she's become in this age of the future is that what she said about or just the like the the, weight of it all the sacrificing of half of her people and then another large portion to create Heidenland in the first place and just thinking about all that lays before her. The order is time passes, seriousness, Heidelin crystal, La Habrea. That's where Emmett leans forward. And he's not leaning forward. This is, my favorite part of the this is where he starts to get a little bummed. 
And the bummers only ride from there as he gets into Emmett's Amarot. And Hithos kind of gives this like, well, that kind of sounds like him face at the camera. <laughs> Zodiac's death. Then we just like, we just jump straight to Zodiac's death. Planet fuzzy, preposterous, utterly insulted Emmett. It's so good. I mean, how would you react? Not if, well. If you were told. He's also, I love how offended he is by, by the notion that he recreated Amarat out of a sense of like longing. <laughs> that he would be so sentimental yeah. in the eons past instead of fully about his duty. But he couldn't complete his duty. He, there was all sorts of problems along the way. He was in a holding pattern. Yeah. Like, what else was he going to do? Nothing else. Sire more children? I would have personally told the story a little edited down for the people in the room. I wouldn't have gone as hard after Emmett. Yeah. I agree. But yeah. if you can't change the future anyway, you know, why not go for, for it? From the story perspective, it's a, it's a much more interesting happening for the story. Absolutely. Just like, because if they didn't do it, I'd be like... I'd be dying to know how Emmett would yeah, react. How would he feel if we insulted him and to his face? What does young Emmett do with that information? And the answer is reject it in a, a way where you see the, the, the shades of the villain that is to come down the road. Exactly. I would never do that. I'd do exactly what I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty, pretty much what he says. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's just like I wouldn't. I wouldn't stop what I was set here to do. It's like, well, that's kind of how you get into that. Yeah, that's how you get there. That's how he ends up with that problem in the first place is by not giving up. But he just, you know, he has to fill some time, so he makes a model train set that turns into a full replica of his favorite city with all his friends. Yeah, yeah. I am sad we didn't get to see Vanas' house though. Probably doesn't have an item limit on it either. (laughs) Would have been cool to see. What? We didn't see any of their houses. I know, because there's that line. She's like, "Why? Why not? Why go to Elpis?" Why not go to Amarat or my house? And I'm just and I'm just like, yeah, why don't we go to Amarat? I'd why like to see Amarat. I want to see Amarat. It probably won't look as cool as the Amarat we saw. No. I don't like the red brick as much. I it's like red, cool. red brick to me is very government building civic. And I like it. I like, you know, the founding fathers I, I, and big I, bells. And- I like it, but not for something as tall as a skyscraper. Yeah, I, this scene was incredible. I absolutely, I absolutely loved it. I love just as an Emmett fan. I love that even when he's not talking, he is just deflated the entire scene he's just holding his tea disassociating my favorite part about it is how insulted he is by the idea that he would invite you to defeat him and it's something that was heavily debated when we made our way through Shadowbringers did Emmett want to be defeated and I think that confirms it I think it does, yeah. And and now we're connecting even more lines when we realize that so many ancients chose to leave yeah. their living. And so, exactly. so suddenly it's like Emmett probably had the coolest death canonic of any of any ancient that ever lived. Any of them. You get like, to choose when you return to the star and how cool that he got to do it with the shard of Asm. With the Warrior of Light. Which makes me think even more that the other soul that Heidelin ferried to the source was Emmett because she can't return him to his rejoined world. Yes. You have to make a choice because Because, it's still sundered. Well, because he really died. And so he'll remember the cool shit we did with him. Yes. And so when we get to talk to him again, he'll have that moment of friendship we had with him before we went. Which is why the I, I, there's going to be some big life stream revelation at the end of all of this. And we're going to, I think I, I really I, like, I think, I don't know. I don't know how it happens, but I think there's going to be some kind of Avengers assemble moment where everyone we've ever known and loved kind of how uh, Yasail and Horshafant show up at the end of, the Nidhogg fight, you know, kind of manifest, I, I guess, out of the life. I haven't really thought about that in so long. And now I like now I'm I need to go back and a little fuzzy. revisit that 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 cut scene. But I think we're going to have a, a Avengers portal assemble moment. But instead of portals, it's going to be the souls of our loved ones somehow reconstituting through the live stream to help aid us in some way, whether it's battle or an avatar talking to their you know, ancestor avatar moments. Like maybe we, we either need advice from them or we need uh, energy from them or, or we just need their help fighting. I don't know, but the, we need, you cannot inform me that Emmett now knows we used to be, we, we had like a best buddies, like spring break trip on Elpis and then not have me go and hang out with Emmett again. It's, it has to happen. It's a joy of life. 
that's how you fight alien depression sauce. It's delayed. I'm still, I'm still reeling. I, I hadn't put it together until now. Like the, the themes of Asians of ancients choosing when to move on. And, and Emmett kind of taking that to a pretty dramatic extreme with, I've chosen, it's time, I'll invite my new old friend to come and slay me. <laughs> it was a legitimate challenge, though, and that's what makes it so much fun. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's so layered, and it's part of what makes 5.0 so damn compelling. Uh, because it's, it's layered. It's like, because, yeah, maybe he chose, he wanted to die. I think he was fine with either outcome. I think he's, he's like, either I'm in the wrong and these people are worthy of carrying on our legacy, however they see fit, or I'm right, and they're not worthy. And this world still needs me to stick around. Exactly. So if, if I'm right, they're going to die, and I'm in the driver's seat. And if I'm wrong, I finally get to move on. I finally get to rest. Like, I, I think, man, it's such a fucking, what a great character. And Highland's going to do the same thing. Oh. Well, we did already verse her once. We've been talking about how she doesn't really have a future in our world when this is all over. I expect she's going to challenge us again to see if we're great enough to the task to defeat Dynamis. I don't the Harpy Sisters. I don't know about I don't know about like f- friendly. Hey, could you just kill me? I'd appreciate it. Send Thanks. me off. Send me off. It's, if a any, pos- it's a possibility. If any if any game narrative could find a way to do that and make it make sense, it would be this one. As an adventurer, have the final grand battle adventure. Yes. Yeah. I like this. Is that it? Like, invitation. Would you like to try and kill me? Yes or no? The mechanics will be great. Sign check below. We'll check yeah. one. Like, is that, is that how, how Heidelin rolls up with a, I guess it would be a trial, not a dungeon. Because of Elidibus's line that all the sorrows left to you, I don't think she continues into the future. She's the embodiment of all the hopes of the ancients. Is Hyland made of multiple people? Or is it just Bana? Because I know she's at the heart of Hydaelyn. Well, we know that more people offered themselves up to create Hydaelyn much in the same fashion as Zodiac. So there would be souls, I guess, stuck in Hydaelyn much the same way there were souls stuck in Zodiac. But there's no council of 14 lawful goodies who joined. Because we know Bana is the heart of Hydaelyn. And Elidibus was the heart of Zodiac, but it doesn't seem like there's a second council of 14 that made Hydaelyn. Hydaelyn is entirely Vana. Well, it's a fringe room. room. Yeah, no, I guess I, uh, hmm, I guess my issue is I just put importance on that there was a 14 on, members on that made up. Yeah, yeah. That no. the heart is the only important pilot seat. The brother well, members it, of it, it don't it matter. It becomes the personality driving factor yeah. of the primal that is the end result. In that final scene when she's walking, I thought we were about to meet the rival 14 who made Heidelin. Oh, that never crossed my mind for a yeah. moment. I figured it was because, because we saw is the it? group, we saw the group the first time the name Vana is ever mentioned when we go into that one, a nighter and we see the recording. Yeah. It's a large, just random group. Yeah. And I was counting the room and it didn't count to 14. Yeah. That's why I was counting back then. Cause yeah. I thought there was a rival 14. I wouldn't even bother. Cause I figured if they were telling, showing us 14, they would have circled it again. Yeah, it have been, been like, well, I, this is the only way we know how to do things. Let's make it a circle. Cool. That's something I thought was important, but obviously oh, isn't. Gotcha. Yeah. No. Seat is all that matters. No, well, for our purposes, although it is, now I'm interested in the other souls that are, I guess, stuck in Heidelin, much the way there were souls stuck in Zodiac. That's why she needs to die. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so much more sense because yeah. because I've I've I have not trusted Heidelin pretty much this entire time. But now after meeting Vana and knowing the the weight of everything that she carried for all of these centuries, how long has it been? Century. Twelve thousand years. Twelve thousand so centuries, more than a millennia. Well, it's confusing because Emmett says a thousand thousand lifetimes and twelve thousand. Well, that's that's a lot of lifetimes. And we don't and we don't know. How old he was when he joined the convocation? Yeah. Was he young? Yes, yeah, but, but young in half, reference to dark, what age? <laughs> immortals, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like the Time Lord math starts getting weird in Doctor Who as well. Mm. Yeah, so, so I like, because I still, I've, I'm with you. I feel a, a Heidelin fight coming on because I'm, I'm really coming out of Elpis feeling that. Vana and Emmett are inverse mirrors of each other. Emmett completely focused on the past and restoring things to how they were and preserving it at all costs. And Vana 
being the person that looks forward, that rejects the, the past and tries to progress as opposed to retain. And Median is, isn't my nihilism beautiful? We need the counteract of, isn't life beautiful? And I think the ancients yeah. will find that in their own death. I think so too. When you say that, I think of like Professor Honeydew, and that makes Median Beaker. Kind of. What? Did, I mean, maybe Beaker psychically communicates via emotion. I can't understand him, but Honeydew <laughs> can. Professor Honeydew just made a bunch of Beakers a bunch of and beakers. fired them into, yeah. this, into or, uh, space. And, and Kermit is like, well, there's your problem there, Professor Honeydew. I mean, he didn't peer test the thing in Muppet Vision 3D, and that you, destroyed almost you, the whole world. You asked too simple a question. <laughs>